Yeah. What well, I mean, let's talk a bit about you know the fact that you said you've got this great team, yet you've sort of become this kind of celebrity, you know, out there, you know, on you know on stage at E three with your fake eyelashes, <laughs> and, you know, doing your demos and stuff, and you know, people online all you know saying this game should be called Jade Raymond's Assassin's Creed, and it would sell even better. And it's like, I mean, what do you make of sort of like all this, you know, fame fame that you're getting? People. I, uh, well, I'm very surprised uh, about the whole thing. I think, you know, Patrice talks about the game just as much as me. So, right. and I think it's sort of normal that creative director and producer talk about a game. Right. Uh, I don't know, maybe it's just weird to have like a woman talking about an action game called Assassins. Like, right. for example, I went, uh, I went through the border to get into the States because I live in Canada. Right. And uh, the guy was asking me all these questions. I said, yeah, I'm a game producer. He said, which game? I said, Assassin's Creed. And he was like, because he'd heard about it. Right. He's like, a girl is doing that game? <laughs> nice uh, I'm like, even getting it from the border right. guys, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, I mean, that's, as you said, I mean, if it's a hardcore game at the same point, you know, I think the fact that, you know, you're doing it and you, you're managing this big team and stuff like that, and it's like, you know, you're easy on the eyes, so people know that, right? And it's, I mean, is it like, I mean, is it embarrassing though, or it's just one of those things where it's like, what you have to put up with, I guess, right? Embarrassing. No, I mean, I love my job and talking about the game is part of the job and stuff. I just kind of wish that more people were talking about it, like if we could put a, more people on the team in front right. of the cameras and, you know, share the spotlight. Patrice gets to share the spotlight. So who, who's the MVP on the team? We'll give him a little love here. And you pick the one person? MV I can't do that. <laughs> 158 people, people, I pick I one know. person. That's true. But, I mean, but, but Patrice obviously is a guy you talk about a lot as sort of the creative director in terms of his vision for the Yeah, game. I mean, and I really think that, you know, everyone worked really hard on this game to deliver his vision. Right. And I think that we did a really good job. So I think, uh, you know, I'm proud of the whole team for really, like, nailing what Patrice wanted. So is he, is he basically, like, the designer of the game? I mean, you say creative director, but is that the same thing? Well, it's not 100% the same thing. I mean, we have designers who focus on the mechanics and the game design stuff, but they all have to fit their stuff in Patrice's vision. So he gives the high-level vision, like, okay, it's assassins. You you know, I want these features and stuff. Right. Then, uh, you know, I do some juggling on the, okay, is it doable or not side. And once we say, yes, okay, go, These are this is what we're focusing on, then everyone tries to fill in all the details that Patrice will support Patrice's vision. So he kind of, um, you know, looks at the details and says yes or no on right. things. Yeah. Wow, so, I mean, after doing this for three years, you know, managing a big project like this, is the kind of thing where you're just ready to like re-enlist again, or is it? Definitely. I mean, I well, love playing games and what I'm uh, playing games and making games, but um, yeah, I mean, I just would love to be able to work on another project like this. Right. Yeah. So I mean, you're you're into the big games, not the small Xbox Live Arcade thing. I mean, it's like you get off on the idea of doing these, you know, huge projects. I like the idea of trying to push games to a new level, or like being able to do things on a big big budget that are doing things differently right. in games. I think. Um, but sometimes you know, people say that's one of the you know problems is like the bigger the budget, the harder it is to innovate because you're taking so much risk. It's true. So. Yeah, it's true. So I'm really happy that Ubisoft is willing to take that kind of risk because it is a lot more work and it is a lot more risk. You can't say, okay, I know people like GTA, so we're going to make the same game, but right. do this. Or I know people like Halo 3, so we're going to make the same game. It's a lot more risk. But I think that's what's really exciting is like being able to have the support and also push what you're doing in terms of gameplay. And I think it's cool, too, on the smaller budgets, too. Right. I think anything that's innovative and like a portal or something that yeah, you know, Kim mean, Swift and the team did there cool. is phenomenal and it's like stuff that you know is small and innovative but then I think it's even more impressive when you can have a game with a huge you know multi-million dollar budget that still tries something new so yeah I mean what do you think like two three years from now how do how what do you think or what do you hope people remember about Assassins is how it kind of pushed the genre in a new way because I'm sure we're going to see all these other games now with interactive crowds and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> well I think most importantly I hope people just have fun Right. I think that's like what would make me happy if people were like, I really enjoyed my experience and I had fun. Um, that's it. And and they, I think they're a little surprised because there's a little bit of a twist in this game, which you know yeah. has been like hinted for years and years, and there's like a leaked comic book, and you know you, you hear all about this, this sort of sci-fi kind of quantum leap idea. I mean, now now that the game's out, I, I mean, what do you have to say to those people that like put the disc in? And just said like, well, what is this? What's going on? <laughs> is that what, was that your intention to just sort of, I mean, totally shock people? That totally again? shock people. <laughs> well, you have to ask Patrice that because again, it comes back to a vision thing. But the thing that's really important to Patrice is making these seamless games where there's an explanation for everything that you experience. Like right. I think you know, if you think of Sands of Time, when you died, it was like, oh no, that 
you know, that's not how it went, and so right. it all made sense. And I think this whole metaphor that we've created with the animus, and I won't go into detail, explains all kinds of game conventions that you kind of need to guide the player, but right. that don't make sense or would take away from, like, the creative whole. So, um, yeah, it was, it was part of the plan from the start. And I'm sure that allows, you know, a lot of opportunities in terms of where the animus can take you to sort of, you know, different areas. I mean, you're, are you thinking of Assassins as a real franchise that could take place in, you know, many different settings? We're, well, we're hoping that it is a franchise. I think right. you have to have, like, we'll have to wait and hear what the gamers think about the game, and right. hopefully if they're super excited, we'll get to make other things. But yeah, from the start, what we wanted to do is create a kind of meta story that future games or books or movies or you know, comics or whatever right. could fit into, and um, so that's that's another reason why that stuff is there. Exactly. So we'll see where uh, <laughs> Altair goes, I guess, in the future. So do we know if we're going to do an Assassin's Two, or it's sort of up in the air, I guess, based on how uh, what the gamers say. What we know now is we're going to go on vacation. Go on vacation, <laughs> take a little bit of a break, and people will enjoy it through the holidays. Well, it's a fantastic game, Jade. I'm sure going to be nominated for a lot of Game of the Year awards, and uh, congratulations on being able to uh, pull this one off. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, and we'll see you soon. Okay, thanks everybody. We'll see you next time right here in the bonus round. Next time in the bonus round, we meet two females involved in the gaming business, Bioshock producer Melissa Miller and Game Trailer's own Amanda McKay. Find out what they think of the role of women in the video game industry next time in the bonus round. Bonus round.